Glory to Jesus. So it's as if, as, as we've heard already, um, uh, we're at the end of Romans, this beautiful epistle, so rich in theology and also in, um, in practices. We started Romans back in, in June, as soon as the government opened the churches again. So, and this is something that I will carry throughout the years, knowing that through the spirit, through the time of pandemic, we were studying Romans, and every word, every, every scripture that we read, that we studied, gave us that strength, gave us that hope to go through these difficult times. And uh, I urge you, even though this, uh, we studied this book now, but from time to time, keep reading this letter. So, um, the message for, um, the title for today's message is True Love Warns. We've already heard some warnings today, but now we're going to listen to a different kind of warning. So as I told you, as we're coming to an end of this, of this epistle, the Apostle Paul continues to pour out his heart to the church in Rome. If you remember, in the first 16 verses of chapter 16, Paul gave a long list of recommendations, a long list of greetings to those people who left a mark in his life and in his ministry. And through all out this, this chapter, the love that Paul has for these saints echoes. You can see it in his words. You can see it in his greetings. And um, Paul considered these, these people as brothers, as sisters, as friends, as beloved, as co-workers in Christ Jesus. Now remember this, Paul, one of the greatest apostles, he accomplished what he accomplished because he was surrounded by God-fearing people. He was surrounded by spirit-filled people, willing to serve selflessly. And this should also remind us that each and every one of us, we need each other. We need, we need each other even to fulfill God's calling in our lives. Now, looking at today's portion of scripture, Paul, in verse 17, speaks a word of caution. He gives a warning. And why does he, does he do that, this? Because it is the nature of love to warn someone. Now, I don't think this is, this is hard to understand. When you truly love someone, when you genuinely love someone, your wife, your husband, your children, your parents, your siblings, your church family, your greatest concern is what? Is for their safety. Your greatest concern is for their joy, for their prosperity, and for the blessings of God to pour on their lives. And Paul clearly demonstrates his love in his warnings. And before going to Romans 16, let's go back to Acts chapter 20. And we're going to, going to see the way Paul expresses his love to the Ephesian leaders. In Acts 20, verses 28 to 31, Paul tells the Ephesian leaders, Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has, has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtain, obtained by his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in, 
will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish, to warn everyone with tears. Isn't that love? Paul spent three years with tears in his eyes warning these people. So now let's, let's look at the warning in Romans 16, verse 17. I appeal to you, brothers. I beg you. I urge you. I plead with you. Paul has a serious, urgent, heartfelt request. And this is the same heart attitude that Paul showed in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, where he said, I plead with you, brothers, I urge you, brothers, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. So what is Paul's appeal to the brethren here? To watch out, to stay on the look, to stay on guard, and to watch out from who and where? To watch out from those who cause division and those who, fall, who teach false doctrine where? In the church. So this is now getting quite personal. This is something that is happening in the church. And Paul warns us to watch out, to stay alert, to keep our eyes open. So as you, as you remember before verse 17, Paul gave a list of people whose names are worth remembering. Why? Because they lived their lives totally surrendered for Jesus. So their name is worthy to be remembered. But then, now, he goes on to mentioning other people that he tells us, stay away from them. Have nothing to do with them. Watch out. Avoid them is the command. Let's, re let, let, let's read the scripture again before we go there. I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them. That is the command. That is the imperative. Paul didn't say, be patient with them. Paul didn't say, tolerate them. What did he say? Identify them. Stay away from them. Have nothing to do with them. This is important for us to remember. As we wait for Christ's second return, we should guard, we should protect the unity in the church. And we should protect it from whom? From those who try to cause division in the church. Also, as we wait for the Lord's return, let's persevere in the truth. Let's persevere in the true doctrine. Let's persevere in the gospel of Jesus Christ and that of the apostles. Now, we can disagree on many things. In fact, in chapter 14, we mentioned those non-essentials, those gray areas. So we can disagree, yes, but we cannot be divisive. What does scripture say about a person that causes division in the church. Now, there's many scriptures, but for time's sake, I'm going to quote just one. It's Titus chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. As for a person who stirs up division after warning him once and then twice, have nothing more to do with him, knowing that such a person is warped, corrupted, and sinful. He is self-condemned. Those are some harsh words. And what does scripture say about false teachers? Let's go to 2 John chapter 1 verses 8 to 11. 
Second John chapter 1, verses 8 to 11. Watch yourselves so that you may not lose what you have worked for, but may win a full reward. Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him in your house or give him any greeting. For whoever greets him takes part in his wicked works. Wow. You might be saying, and this sounds mean, don't even greet them. Don't receive them in the church. And But that's not enough. Let's go back to Romans 16 and see what Paul has to say about these people. In verse 18, Paul says this. For such persons, those who cause division in the church and the false teachers, for such persons do not serve the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't serve him. But what do they serve? Their own appetites. And by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. They deceive the hearts of the vulnerable, of the weak, of the innocent. They don't serve Jesus, so stay away from them. What they serve is their own appetites. What they want is to have their pockets full and their bellies full. They don't serve Jesus. This is Paul saying these words. Many times as Christians, we're maybe because it sounds mean or it sounds unloving, it seems like we're afraid to point these false teachers and tell them the truth of the scripture. But these false teachers are sending people to hell. These false teachers, these people that cause division in the church, are sending people, are sending our children to hell. And we must be alert. We must identify them and we must stay away from them. Rebuke them once, twice, and then stay away from them. Personally, I don't care if I have to hurt someone's feelings in order to preserve the true word of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we are, nowadays we're living in an age and an era, everybody has his feelings hurt. We must persevere in what is true. And that's the word of God, whatever it takes. Galatians chapter 1 verse 8, verse 8 reads, But even if we... Or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you. Let him be accursed. God is serious about unity in the church. God is serious about holiness. God is serious about his word. So my, my plea with you this morning is that you stay away Stay away from these false teachers. I'm not ashamed of naming them. Stay away from prosperity preachers. Stay away from that word of faith movement and all those other, other branches that go out from the same movement. Stay away from the new apostolic reformation. Churches like Bethel with their big songs, with their, with their music. Watch out for these people. These are people that go on tunes to, to get the anointing of that, that person. Watch out for these people. Be alert. Watch out from anyone who disagrees on the essential things. What are the essential things? The deity of Jesus Christ. The humanity of Jesus Christ. The nature of the gospel. Do we have to believe in Jesus only to be saved? Did Jesus die for our sins? Recently, I was listening to a friend of mine. He used to live here in Montan. Thank God, not, not anymore. That, may, that might sound harsh. Whatever. This person was preaching, saying that on the cross, 
God didn't pour out his red on Jesus, no, but on the cross, the glory of God and the pleasures of God met. And Jesus didn't die for our sins, but Jesus died for those people who feel rejected. So Jesus came on earth in accordance to what this person was saying. Jesus came on earth because if someone rejected you, now you're accepted. Have nothing to do with these people. Stay away from those people who tell you that the Bible is just a moral book. And we have all these doctrines here on this island. Stay alert. Watch out. Stay away from those people that pull you to a side. Pull you away from the rest of the congregation. And with their smooth talk, with their flattery, stir up division. Don't let that person influence you. Actually, stay away from that person. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8 reads, Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Watch out. Have nothing to do with them. Have you ever watched one of those, those animal documentaries? When, especially when I was growing up, I, th that was one of my, my favorite things to do. And um, so you're watching these documentaries, and um, so you're watching these animal documentaries, and you see a big herd of buffaloes going by the grassland. And just a few steps away, you see some lions. And what do these lions do? They wait, patiently wait, observing the buffaloes and waiting for an opportunity. Now, these lions, they don't go for the strongest buffalo. They wait, they patiently wait for maybe an injured buffalo to, because, because he's injured, he can't keep track with the rest of the herd. Or else, they wait for that young buffalo who maybe gets disorientated, so he loses the, the rest of the herd. They wait for that animal. And as soon as that animal is isolated from the rest of the flock, that's when they attack. So they attack, they prey on the weak. They prey on the vulnerable. They prey on those isolated from the rest of the flock. And we have to be careful because this happens in the church also. When we forsake the gathering of God's people, we are easy target. When we don't have that commitment to be in church on Sunday morning for Bible studies, for prayer meetings, for fellowship, we are easy prey. Easy prey for Satan, easy prey for these false teachers, and easy prey for those who want to cause division in the church. That's who they go after. Easy target. Easy prey. Don't be an easy target. Stay alert. Watch out. Keep your eyes open. Now, I don't want anyone to feel guilty this morning. I just want to speak the truth. And the truth is, do not stray away from God's people. Divisive people and false teachers don't serve Jesus. They prey on those who let their guards down. The naive, the innocent, the weak, the young. Another reason to stay away from these people is found in verse 19. Romans 16 verse 19 says, for your obedience is known to all. 
so that I rejoice over you. But I want you to be wise as to what is good and innocent, as to what is evil. So Paul is telling the Roman church, I know of your obedience. And everyone knows of your obedience. Everyone knows your good testimony. But if you let these people in, if you tolerate false teachers, they will trample, they will destroy, they will make a shipwreck out of your testimony, out of your faith. Stay away from them. Now, after reading these verses, hearing these words, it might, it might feel uh, a bit heavy in here. To watch out all the time, constantly stay alert. To, um, if, if you hear a brother preaching a sermon or a brother says something, you have to go look the scriptures, make sure that what he's saying is according to the scriptures. It gets tiring. So Paul, in verse 20, speaks a word of encouragement. Let's read verse 20. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The God of peace. In all of this, God is a God of peace. And soon our struggles will be over. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. It is the grace of God that will carry us through. The grace of God saved us and the grace of God sustains us. The grace of God will give us the strength and the grace of God will help us to persevere in the truth. We cannot do it in our own merits, but the grace of God will help us to say no to all ungodliness. The grace of God will give us the discernment to discern these false teachers and people who cause division. And the grace of God will give us the ability to say no. Stay away. You don't serve God. This struggle is not going to last forever. Satan and his minions soon will be crushed. What is our job? Obey the scripture. Stay on that narrow ro road. Keep going. Endure whatever comes against us. Many of these teachers, they have eloquent speech. They have a big crowd following them. And their people might, not might actually, their people attack those who want to speak the truth. So we must endure, we must be prepared, we must stay on that narrow path. Let's run the race, let's stay on the course and not let anyone disqualify us. To end on a good note, God gave us everything we need to live a life of godliness. He gave us the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us. And he gave us his grace. And his grace is sufficient. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your promises. But I thank you also for your warnings. Lord, I thank you that you gave us your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help us. Holy Spirit, enable us. Holy Spirit, teach us. To stay on that narrow path. To say no. To, to say no or, uh, or anything that doesn't belong to you, Lord Jesus. Anything that hinders our relationship with you. That thing might be ourselves. That thing might be other people. That thing might be false teachers. Lord, help us to keep our eyes open. Help us to stay alert. Help us, Lord, that... We don't worry about offending someone's feelings, Lord, because we want to speak the truth. We want to speak your truth, and your truth is a two-edged sword. Lord, we need your truth. We need your warnings. Use us, Lord. Let us be prophets in this age and time, Lord. Let us go out in the darkness, Lord, and be the light. Let us, Lord, Preach this gospel of hope, 
this gospel of peace, this gospel of love. But to do so, Lord, we also must be strong. We must be bold and courageous and say no and have nothing to do with anyone who's, who, whose priority is, whose dream is to fill his pocket and his belly. Lord, we want to serve you. We want to serve you with everything we are, with everything we have. We have nothing in our hands, Lord, as we heard even earlier. We don't, you don't owe us anything, Lord, but we thank you. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your grace that saved us and sustains us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.